Two. 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 Right. Four. Right. Like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. Rules of engagement, man. It's not a fucking game, bro. We're on the streets. We go deep in black heat. South Central, white content in Long Beach. Ooh, we. Wet chunks on our feet. Slide and shit. Two step into the beat. My street. We go deep in black heat. South Central, white content in Long Beach. Ooh, we. Wet chunks on our feet. Slide and shit. Two step into the beat. My street. You know, sometimes you gotta just give yourself a little piece of tranquility. Force your mind, your body, and your soul. This is your host, Nino Cappuccino, bringing you one of those special episodes, man, of ROE, Rules of Engagement. I'm sitting right here live in the park, MacArthur Park, man. Yes, MacArthur Park, where a lot of dead bodies have been found. I'm sitting here with the young champion himself, man, TMT representative, man. Young baby Tyson is in the building, man. Yes, 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 in the building, live, man, with the captain himself, man. Nino Cappuccino, Rules of Engagement. If you haven't subscribed, you haven't pushed that like button, push that like button so that bell would ring. If it ring, that means you'll be notified. Subscribe, Rules of Engagement, man. We're in the building. I'm happy and pleased to be honored to have a special guest here today, man. I'm going to be sitting here talking about the origins of Baby Tyson. <laughs> Let's go, T. Jab. Jab. Damn. Ah. Tyson, you want to tell TV Land, man, from, from your government name to your perspective, man, and introduce yourself? No, nah, yo, baby Tyson, anti-bully champ. Just a hood champ, man. <laughs> Why the hood champ? Because I come from the gutter. You know what I'm saying? Come from the gutter, um, 95th of Juniper, you know, 89th of McKinley, 53rd in Hoover, 48th in Hoover. Just growing up in the hood, being a boxer, man. and. Uh, getting small belts. See, I'm a club fighter, you know, not big time fighter, nothing like that, just a underground champ, boxing champ. So, Never let nobody knock you shine. Sort of like the UGKs, the underground kings, you yeah, know, underground yeah, champ, yeah, huh? Yep. Jab, ha, jab, ha, one, two, ha, uh. We used to play around a lot on the streets, um, fighting every Sunday, putting the gloves on, the big homie Marquise, you know, and the Hoovers used to have us fighting the streets. Mm -hmm. So we would put on the gloves and fight in the streets on every Sunday, and then, Somebody was like, oh, another Tyson. You know, he's shorty buff. He hit like Mike Tyson. He hit real hard. So I, I didn't think none of it. You know, I was a dancer, man. I just uh, got into boxing when I got, you know, a little older. And, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. Let's... Stripper, bad boys for life. Oh, 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 you heard it here, if I hit, you heard it here first, man, on Rules of Engagement, man. It's know. not a rumor. It's not a jacket. Yeah. He said it himself, I man. The man was a stripper. Freak nasty, you know what I'm saying? Freak nasty in the building, man. AK <laughs> Freak Nasty in the building. Freak blood, you got shout some competition. Out all, shout out to all 6 by 9 bad boys for life, all the G Net, you know, all the big homies. She put a lot of people in the game, a lot of people made a lot of money. Growing up in the hood, we just knew how to hustle and stay our ass out of trouble. So we did things we did to make money and then survive and be positive. So now, hold on, hold on T, because I've I been knowing you about 15 yeah. years, bro. Game mama, <laughs> she Lynette, we all strip for it. Man, so hold on, that's interesting, bro. Yeah. So yeah. you started out as a I stripper. That was your I grew that was up homeless, your... so a lot of my homies are, was, I was around were strippers. Strippers. So I used to go to the club with them and just see how fun it was, so I got involved. Got involved. And just started. Opening up for the homies dancing, just, you know, I didn't really go crazy. With no, it's just it's, it's just amazing to me, this moment, knowing someone all this time, <laughs> and I, knowing him as a, as a squabble, a boxer, right? Oh, yeah. We go to the gym, 24-hour fitness, work yep, out, yep. train, see each other, cross paths. Yep. But to know this nigga was out here slaying it, man, getting in, a stripper, a lot of right? Strippers got hands. All my as, niggas yeah, got no, hands. No, no, so I'm not taking that against <laughs> them, no, right? No, you're not It's again. just, for me, it's just shocking because, like, damn. This nigga Tyson can dance. Just... Oh, oh, hey. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Uppercut. <laughs> we did what we did to survive. So if we shake our ass for a couple of dollars, nigga, we just, you know, we just. You know what I'm saying? We, <laughs> we gave it to him, man. You know what I'm saying? We just had fun with life growing up. Growing up in the hood, you know, I was just a cool kid vibing with everybody. So did you lose you your know? parents, if I'm um, asked? No, 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 I, I was raised by my dad, man, and 
you know, my, my dad got hooked on drugs and I just started living in the streets. Had a great father, but things happened, man. I just started living on the streets. One day I came home and I couldn't get in the house. The manager said, um, it was a lock on the door, so she said, I guess he didn't pay the rent, so I ain't never seen him since that. Mm -hmm. So I just broke in the house at night, got all my clothes, started living on the streets. And mm -hmm. I was a cool kid, so I would take showers at parks, and you know, a lot of people didn't know I was a homeless kid for like 15 years because I was always sharp. Right, the way you carried always, yourself. You know, I, I wasn't funky, didn't have bad breath, never got musty, so I would always clean up everywhere I would go and just vibe with everybody and be cool, you know? Nobody knew my age, nobody knew nothing because I was a big kid for my age. So mm -hmm. right now, I'm real humble and I appreciate everything I go through in life because I was somebody that came up off the gutter. Like, I can vibe with everybody in this park because this is how I grew up. So every day I still wake up and be thankful for my whole situation of growing up on the streets. A lot of people thought I'd be pushing baskets right now, and, and I'm not. A lot of people thought I'd be homeless. I just stayed strong, man, and kept moving. One, 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 two, Going from stripping now. To hip hop dancing for different artists. Stripping to hip hop dancing, then from there, touring. And then from there, what, what, what was that like? Was it a specific altercation that took place? Was no. somebody my boy, I don't my, what my, really inspired you to go box? My boy Damon Jones, he used to manage KC and JoJo, Jodeci, mm -hmm. CC Pennison, and I was like kind of like a security on the road. So we used to play around on the road and box, and he was like, yo, man, you should be a boxer. I hit a hole in the wall, and I uh, like had to get some people out of one of the shows. So I never took it serious. I said, okay, cool. So in 90 days, I went in the gym, and I turned pro. My first three pro fights, I was 3-0. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know nothing, didn't train, didn't know nothing about boxing, didn't take it serious. And then my phone started ringing off the hook. I started taking everything they was calling me. Didn't know nothing about boxing. I was just happy to get paid. So whether I won or lost a fight, I still was getting paid. I didn't give a fuck about winning or losing. So I would start traveling. Yo, basically, your interest. I travel by myself. Hold on a second. So basically, it, your interest, at that time you were introduced to boxing. Yeah. Being I didn't you, know nothing about boxing. Being that you were a kid in the street coming up and good. you were surviving, yeah. you had hands. Yeah. And I was a big puncher. Your interest of the money was because you was trying to survive. You want to I eat. I was surviving. Correct. I didn't care. You didn't about really take it sincere. Like I, didn't take your shit I can go pro with this. I can yeah. go all the way. No, I can I be. I can really, really yeah. be the next baby take, Mike Tyson. I didn't take it serious. Okay, so it was just like a hobby slash survival. Let me go get my check. It, it was a hustle. Win or lose. Go get my check. Win or lose. And even if I got in there with a guy that was like seven feet, it didn't matter. Win or lose. Eighty. He was two hundred. He hit me one time. I take a knee. The fight was over. Cause I'm not going to get in there and get fucked <laughs> up for nobody. So I, I'm talking about man. I used to get in there with giants, man. Motherfucker hit me two or three times. I'd be like, oh, my shoulder. Ah. Run my check. You gotta have game in this world. Cause if you die in the ring, they're not gonna give you shit. Hell so yeah. I realized. Wait a minute. You mean it's, okay, because I went 3-0, and right? Dropped it, first three fights, 3-0, and right? I was like, wait a minute. Being a real nigga from the hood. You mean to tell me they paying for all this shit for me to go from state to state, nigga, I'm living like I got a million dollars. I'm just getting like a thousand dollar fight, four rounds, 12 minutes, you get a G, win or lose. How I'm many like, fights? I got it within I got a week. Or well, well, no, fights, like, fights, I, man, fight. sometimes, Sometimes I fought, well, one time I fought back to back. I fought out in LA Friday and then I flew to Seattle Saturday. Mm -hmm. But you have to take a seven minute break. But man, I was fighting like every week. And I was that guy you can call if a motherfucker pull out. I was the nigga you can call to fight because they know I take anything. 180 to like, nigga, they had me fight niggas like 230 and shit like that. I was just like, fuck it. I realized, wait a minute. Instead of me slanging in the hood, I can get in the ring and fight and make some thousands and don't get in trouble. So what I did, Nino Cap, that was smart. after my 3-0, and when I realized, oh man, you mean to tell me I could just get in the ring, go one round, and still get my payday. So I just started taking everything coming, man. And um, I, so, I, I didn't so, never get hurt or nothing. So 57 what, fights, fucked up record because of the judges. So, so when did you discover your skill and your knack to understand the differentiary, meaning the difference between let me squat and stay trying to go head up with this motherfucker who outweighed me 30, 40 pounds, yeah. which is smart. Because knowing a person that outweigh you 30, 40 pounds, yeah. not to mention if he got a reach yeah, on yeah. you. That's two, that's two double sure troubles right eight. there. So, that's two you know, double troubles. So when did you decide to say, shit, hold on. 
I'm throwing this one, I'm throwing that one. When I get I, in, I, I'm, I didn't throw them. I just knew that you have a right to take a knee and stop. Two. Uh, two. Uh, four. Like that. You know what I'm saying? So when I realized boxing was a hustle, it's like maybe my fourth fight, okay, I, <clears throat> I was in it with a big guy, right? So I outboxed him and I knew I did. See, I can't knock everybody out and drop everybody in them because they big. Mm -hmm. So one guy I dropped three times in one round and still lost. So I said, oh, he, okay, that's how they do it. See, by me not having representation, you know, by me just, you calling me saying, baby, Tyson, we got to fight in New York. Yeah, you, you, know you was the fall guy. I was the fall guy. So they wasn't going to give this champion notification to you. It's like you get yeah. notoriety. Yeah. Off top, you get notoriety because you fighting somebody who's somebody I'm already. Yeah. yeah. So it's like for you to win, it's like, oh, no, he's They're not going to let me win in his town. Yeah, you're, you're fucking with their market. Yeah. You're messing with their market and their money now. So you know what I mean? Started, I put two and two together. I said, okay, so if I get called 10 times to 10 different states, if I don't knock them out, I'm not going to win anyway. So I said, okay, ain't no, ain't no sense of getting hurt. Nigga hit me, if I see stars, I'm taking a knee and the fight is over. <laughs> Break bread. I'm a real nigga, man. At the end of the day, I'm going to get my money, man. Yeah, you, I ain't stupid. But run that I check up. I'm good, I'm healthy, I'm not fucked up, man. I have 57 professional fights. My record is 14, 40, and 3. My record should have been 50 and 7. That's just how bad I got fucked over. Because I know, I mean, I'm outboxing these dudes and hurting them and dropping them, but by me being in a town, man, hey, they win. And it was fun to me. I ain't bitching nigga playing. Man. It was fun because I got paid every time. That's solid. I was a homeless nigga with money and didn't care because That's you could call me, That's you, could call That's me solid, ten, you could call me 10 times because it's okay, baby Tyson, I got an eight round fight for you for three grand. Oh, nigga, I'm in shape. I'm going to go to eight rounds. And at the end of the day, I already know what's up. The judges score 23 and, and not, 24, and the fights are all close. Now that I think about it, that's because I, you, that's what you was telling me about a couple of because I told you, let me know the next fight when you in town because you was on tour then back then. That's yeah, when we was going 24 hour fish. Yeah. This was like damn near def, decade ago. Like 2008, yeah, 2009. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. It's kind of come to, but now it's 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 a trip that you say this, 57 right? 57 fights. Like listen, 14 wins that they couldn't do because them niggas was asleep, and 40 fights that were like decisions. Mm -hmm. So hey. It's, That's it's, how it is. I it's, have it's, fun. It's the trip that you say this, right? That we even, I'm having this opportunity to have this conversation with you yeah. because. And it's political, come, races, and everything. Come, coming up out of the Knicks Garden, yep. like we we had we, 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 we had a boxing yeah. league, we had a boxing league, and we, you know, and of course, you know, this is a lot of cats to come up by my neighborhood. This was how we were conditioned to learn how to fight. You threw a lot yeah. of our OGs, our big homies. So a lot of us, we had hands. Most of us, we just didn't turn it into a professional thing like boxing or going to a ring and actually box. We boxed for a hobby and boxed in the hood in the gloves in our own little ring. But I to go out to box serious. as a hobby, yeah, exactly. Same thing for I me, I just bro. jumped in there like, and I was blessed to have punching power like, cause I'm dropping these big dudes. So you know, man, about like the second year, my stamina was up, so I learned the game. Man, you can go in there and fight eight rounds or six rounds and not even win and get paid. Mm -hmm. That was a hustle for me. I would put on the show and enjoy myself because, man, when you go travel state to state, I'm talking about 40 different times, you living in the top hotel, you getting limo, TV, commercials, video. You're feeling great, man. You're feeling like a million dollars. Tell you nothing, buddy, about the LRT. So I was being positive coming from the gutter. Then you would come back here with two or 3,000 in your pocket and sleep in the car. I had a Lexus coupe on dubs. I would sleep in the car. I mean, I would take showers and gyms and parks. You would just never know I was homeless. I was just so sharp. What were you, what was you doing? I'm with from St. Louis, Missouri, You weren't stacking man. your money? You no, feeding the homeless. I ain't stacking that. I was living day by day, feeding the homeless, man, and just surviving day by day. Shit was I, hard, man. And, and you gotta and, be tough, only the strong survive. And that's how you are too, bro. I, I have to say, TV Land, this guy right here, he's a very, uh, I, I would want to say gullible in a great way. He's jolly, very funny. Gullible, He's jolly, cool, down to earth, all that. You know what don't I'm saying? Un, don't underestimate him though, because he will tap that ass. Virgo gang, That's the crazy we like part. that. You already know, straight up Virgo. <laughs> That's the crazy part about it. It's like, you know. See, my whole thing was a lot. I have a few cats that when I was growing up, it was my get down warriors. They were silent, quiet, didn't talk. But when it was time to move, move. That's Tyson. That's what Tyson is, man. 
this is a good dude, man. Very good dude, man. Very like grateful. I say, I'm privileged man. to sit here and uh, interview him based on the origins of Baby Tyson because it has not been done yet. See, I'm privileged to sit here with Nino Cappuccino. Same thing. So, you know. So, T, let's go falling back. Okay. You was taking your money and I, I, your earnings, I was, and you was feeding the homeless. I was just feeding the homeless, man. I've been doing this shit forever. Living day by day. I didn't get day by day just life. living in my car, just chilling. Cool, and then, man, hey, man, in 2008, I met my wife. At 25 fitters on 120th. Right. Yeah, I was going, that was my next, going, going to that ladder. <laughs> so, okay. So, moving along then. All right. Since you stumbled up on that uh, next uh, theory of my question. Meeting your wife. Yeah. Now, uh, you want to tell TV Lane, uh, tell her her name, give her a shout TV out to your wife. You know, AKA Money KK. Miss shout KK. Out shout out to KK. <laughs> KK, what it do, home girl? Now, it's crazy because, now, I have a kind of familiarity with Miss KK, yep, yep, her background, yep, yep, right? Yep. And uh, Miss KK was one of them bad butterflies back yeah, in the days, yeah, man. She was yeah. an actual ex stripper. Yeah, yeah. Kayla. Man, I'm talking about. Barbie Coast, nigga. It's a whole lot of Hoovers just trying to get this, this no thing shame, right here, man. Ain't no shame in her game, she'll tell you. Yeah, beautiful she, woman. She was the basic diamond of the Players Club. That's her story, like that. Exactly. Get that lifestyle, flip it, turn out and be a business. High girl. yellow butterball, oh, yeah. thick, beautiful, man. Yeah, she got number love, smart, nigga, Nino Cat. Smart, very Straight smart. Up. But my boy Tyson ended up with the woman that everybody wanted. Ain't I, that some crazy shit? I didn't shit? even know I was just being myself. Hold on, hold on. Follow me, TV Land. <laughs> The man who that was homeless, I was sleeping sure in his car by know. choice though, feeding the homeless people yeah. because he was homeless. Something that we both can relate to because you have to be on that side and know it. Yeah. Um, and then he met this beautiful queen that and changed his whole universe, bro. But all the street niggas, I'm yeah. talking about from the big D-boys <laughs> to the gangsters, <laughs> the hitters, the shooters, Woo! the gang members, I know, bro. Barbie Coles and First King ain't no joke. They wanted her. Man. They wanted this woman, man. She and was Kayla, the one everybody Kayla, wanted. Nigga, they called her Kayla. And that Baby Tyson name. ended up with her, man. She chose me, man. You know, you got to be grateful when a woman chooses you. It was funny because one day we went outside. We was talking to the gym. Tell him again, man. Said, t t tell him again, man. She what, chose. What? Tell him again. She chose me. You know, I'm broke. I don't have no money. I was That's just a survivor. real dude, man. I was just a clean, sharp, cool, energetic nigga. We clicked. We met at the gym. And one thing, man. Uh, we went outside, right, and I was waiting for the spot. I told her, I said, hold up, I got to push my car up to this spot because my transmission was gone. No and fun, she, she, Yeah, she was like, oh, baby. And then next time she was like, I'll buy you a transmission and stuff like that. She just had my back because Major. she said I was genuinely she the real in you too, though. Right. and wasn't in no games and nothing. And we, we met, and, and, and we just clicked, man, and we got married in 2010. And we made uh, 10 years June of 2020. June 30th, 10 years. Man, beautiful time. So I'm just thankful, man, man, you know, and I'm enjoying man. life and, and still feeding homies and doing what I do, man. So you met the woman of your dreams. You got married. No kids? No, she got kids. I got stepkids. That's it, you know? So you never never had, had a seed yourself? Never had kids? No, I don't recall having kids. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come about as far as your connection with TMT? Okay, when I got involved in boxing, I got connected with Sam Watson. And Shout out to Sam. If there. you don't know Sam, then you don't know Sam, man. Sam, Shout out to Sam, man. New face of boxing. Triple OG, man. Team Judah, Zab Judah, Danny Judah. I got connected with these brothers, man. And hey, you know me, I like taking pics. Okay, when I'm you say cool connected, fan. how? That, was you Go walking the down the street? Gym. Was you... No, went straight in the boxing gym and it was a wrap. Taking pictures, being cool and like that. And they were so cool. Team Judah, Team Mayweather, Team Mosley, you know, Team Dawson. And real respect real, so people can just tell. You know what I'm saying? I stay connected with them to this day. All right, TV Land, listen. We're gonna, I'm gonna give y'all a little break for a second. We're gonna do a little, uh, have Tyson give y'all a little quick demo, a little demo, a little dancing, you know what I mean? No. And then from there, we coming back, and we're gonna finish this exclusive, man. We'll be right back, man. Push that subscribe wiggity, like button, man. Shout out to the Bounty Hunters, Wiggity. My street, no deep in back streets. I'm Central Watch Compton in Long Beach. My street, 